Welcome to the Elevating Funeral Service podcast. If you want to run a successful funeral home, cemetery, or pet cremation service, you don't have to be the one that has the lowest price. You do need to be the one that offers the most value, provides the best customer experience, and clearly communicates that in your marketing. On this weekly podcast, Ellery and Welton will show easy ways to demonstrate value to families and create differentiation that helps you stand out from the competition. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Elevating Funeral Service podcast. I'm your host, Ellery Bowker. Today, I'm joined by my co-host and good friend, Welton Hong. And we have a special guest today with us. We've got Chris Kruger with the Foresight Companies. We've got what I think is going to be a great episode today. We're going to be talking to you about something that we call winning the call before the call. And basically, what that means is that your phone needs to ring, right? That's the inquiry call. So you need to win that call before you can win the business, which is the call. So kind of corny, but we need to, you need to win the call before the call. And the idea behind that is, is that before they're going to pick that phone up and call you, they're going to have to have some boxes checked, right? They're going through the buying process. They're, there's little tests that you have to pass uh, to be able to keep moving them along that journey to get that phone to ring, okay? Um, contrary to what some people might think, the phone ringing is not the first start of their journey, right? They are well into that journey before that phone call ever happens. So what we're hoping to do on this podcast episode is talk to you about little things you can do to get them closer to that. So in other words, you're going to convert that pre-phone ringing customer uh, better. Um, before we get into that, uh, I'd like Chris to introduce himself. A lot of you may know Chris. Um, I met Chris a while ago, great guy. Uh, and, and publicly, I will say that I was on a golf tournament with him with Live Oak Bank. Chris carried the entire team and we all won Yeti coolers. So oh, okay. thank you to Chris and thank you to Live Oak Bank. So Chris, if you don't mind, give us a little bit about yourself and your background um, and who you are. Certainly, uh, Ellery, uh, welcome. Thanks so much for having me on. Um, my name is Chris Kruger. I uh, am a partner at the Foresight Companies. I've been in funeral service for going on 25 years. I spent about 15 years of that at Service Corporation International. So I was in the corporate development, uh, the real estate construction, spent a lot of times overseas as well. Um, but for the last two years, I've been at the Foresight Companies, really working on with our accounting clients, uh, a lot on the transaction side and doing a lot of financing work, but also spending quite a bit of time focused on consulting and more of the strategic consulting at looking at what is the consumer's attitudes about our industry? How do we position ourselves? How do we position our clients? for the future in this industry. You know, so often um, we, we feel like we have such a solid command of our, of our clients and our customer base. And what we're really trying to do is position people for the future. Awesome, thank you very much. And Welton, how are you doing? It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> we know that. I'm not complaining. No more complaining. It's yeah, hot yeah. here in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have this episode um, where we're just going to talk about these little tests that you have to pass to get the consumer to dial your phone number. But before we do that, I think we need to establish something here that there's three things that you're going to have to believe in your heart deeply. Um, and if you don't believe these three things, then the rest of the podcast probably won't have a lot of value for you. So I'll let you duck out and thank you for listening so far. Uh, the three things that you need to believe are one, that the consumer wants to be in control of their shopping experience. Okay. They, they want to, you have to believe that you also have to believe that the consumer expects it. Okay. They're going to, and if they don't get what they expect, that's called an unmet expectation, which is the start of any poor customer experience, right? You expect one thing, you're delivered another thing. And the thing I like to mention just to illustrate it is, you know, if you're at Red Robin and you order the burger that looks four inches high and beautiful, and it comes out looking like the dollar burger from McDonald's, there's an unmet expectation with consumers, if they expect it and you don't deliver it, you're starting off on the wrong foot, okay? And the third thing you need to believe is that consumers hate any kind of friction in the buying experience. Right. And I think you can believe that just by thinking about yourself. Whenever you're kind of going through any buying experience online, you start hitting these roadblocks, you're wondering why they can't make this thing easier, okay? So those three things you have to believe. The first test though that we have to pass, okay, and this is kind of the very start of that journey for that, for that consumer, is you have to be found online and you immediately have to show how you're different, okay? Because you're not gonna be the only funeral home coming up with that search. So you immediately have to show you how you're different. 
And what I want to do in this first segment is have Chris talk about why, using some of the research that they've had from a recent study they did, to show kind of why that's important. And then Welton, who is an expert in paid search, search engine optimization, uh, optimizing your, your listings and all the other stuff to make sure that you elevate to the top. So if we could, on this thing, let's talk about how to get found online and how to show differentiation. But we'll start, Chris, with you talking about kind of why that's important. Sure. It, it, the why, and I think you pointed out, we did a study going back in May of this year uh, that showed the consumer that 75% of all consumers expect to find pricing online. So 75% expect to find pricing. 52% of all consumers say that they may very well not do business with you if you don't provide that pricing and that transparency to them. So you've got, if you've got somewhere in the neighborhood of 2.4 million families that are experiencing a death each year, 1.8 million of those are expecting to go to just find their prices. If that many are expecting to find the prices, I think it's just intuitive to understand that almost every single one of those are expecting to be able to go online and find out information about who you are, what it's going to cost, and what is this all about? What is the differentiation? So, I mean, I, I think in its simplest form, if you don't have the existing relationship with the family, your first interaction is going to be when they get online and they're looking to find out information about that service. Yeah, great, great point. Um, well, talk to us about how a, cons how a funeral home can do that because you know, if you get into, you know, if you're a small town, there's two funeral homes, you know, you guys are going to divvy up the calls, pretty simple, but you get into a metro market, there's a lot of competition. You also have a lot of, uh, um, you know, direct cremation companies that reach out farther. So they're coming into your market, even though they're 50 miles away. Um, talk to, talk to us about what a funeral home can do um, to show differentiation sure. during the search process. Right. So if you want to target those who are undecided, most likely those families, they go online first, specifically Google, because um, your phone most likely is defaulted to Google search. Your iPhone is defaulted to Google. Your Android devices, it's all tied to Google search. So this little tiny device, most likely if you're undecided family, they go on Google, they might type in your home near me they might type in Chicago funeral homes. So they are problem aware. They have intention looking for funeral homes. They might type in cremation near me, right? So you wanna make sure somehow these undecided families, when they go on Google, somehow you're showing up on first page of Google and they have intention already, right? Computer other industries where the buying journey could be very long, for app needs, imminent needs, it's um, the buying journey is pretty short. So definitely want to be somehow be showing up right somewhere on the first page of Google or Bing or Yahoo. It's the same. And what Elder was talking about is obviously you want to make sure the ad itself does already talk about how you are different. You want to grab their attention, just like yellow page ads, right? In the good old days, remember those thick yellow print, yellow page ads? you will be spending a lot of time in carving out the messaging on that print ad, not that different in the online space on a Google search. You want your ad to talk about how you're different already. Yeah, great point. Um, talking about the yellow page ad, here's, here's the big difference, right? Other, other than fact, you can't measure anything by that unless you had a, you know, a tracking number put in there your ad. But that ad has to talk to every different type of customer exactly. that might want that business where mm -hmm. you can direct customers based upon their search query to different ads that show okay. how they're different. And, and I think the easiest way for a funeral home to know what that ad should say is just look at all your competitors, see what they're saying. If they're all saying the same thing, say something yeah. different. Exactly. You know, by definition, if you want to be seen as different, you must be different, mm -hmm. right? I mean, so yeah. you have to, you have to be different. Um, so that's great. So you have to be found online. You have to immediately show differentiation. If you don't show differentiation, then you're just in the pool of all the other ones. You may or may not get that call, right? If you spin that wheel again, you may get it next time. And you may not, right? There's just no, nothing that says, call me, right? You got to raise your hand. Um, uh, okay. So the second test, um, and this is kind of a bigger one. We'll talk about this for a little bit is that when they hit the website, so you've screamed over here, Hey, call me, call, you know, come to my website. They come to your website and your website needs to be different. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. It can't be the same website that all your competitors have because these people will bounce around. Right. What your goal is, is when they get to that website, your goal is to never let them hit that back button. You need to remove that back button off that keyboard. Um, and the way you do that is you position your website to be a guide. Okay. And, and I'll kind of dive into this a little bit. It's, it's your job as a business owner to know who's coming on your website. Now, it's easy to say, I don't know who it is. Well, yes, you don't have identifiable information, but you know who your target audience is. Right. So without getting into a bunch of different industries, a funeral home owner should know that you probably have four different types of people that are coming to your website. An at-need consumer, a pre-planning consumer, uh, a researcher, and someone coming for the obituaries. Okay? If I come to your funeral home website and I'm the consumer, think like me. Okay? Think like me right? Not like the website provider, okay? Not like what the guy said in the, in the, at the breakout session at NFDA. Think like me, okay? Put yourself in my shoes. I'm one of those four people, okay? So taking away the designs and the pretty graphics and all the other stuff, think about your website in a functional mode, right? Without the design. In a functional mode, the consumer would hit that website and there's four big squares, okay? And this becomes a choose your own adventure, right? Over here, someone died. That's where I need to go, right? Need information on pre-planning? Well, yes, I do. That's speaking to me. That's where I need to go, right? And then what you're going to do is you're now going to take them to that next step. And when I say guide, here's what I mean. If I click that pre-planning button, what is the next thing that customer wants to know? Okay. Again, you know that customer. If you don't, you know, you need to find out. You need to learn this stuff, right? Spend some time with your, with your team and write this stuff out. It's a, it's a great exercise to even do that. But now the next step should now guide me even further, right? It should say, you know, do you have a veteran that you want to pre-plan for? Are you pre-planning for cremation? Are you pre-planning for a Medicaid spend down? That site needs to talk to me, right? It needs to keep talking to me every step of that way. So in the whole context of a website, you know, it's, Funeral homes have this war chest of information, but the way they're designed is it makes the consumer like open up that war chest and then dig through all that crap to find the information that they need. You know what that's called? Friction, right? And people hate it and right. people will hit the back button, okay? Right. You can design a user experience super easy by really writing this thing out with your team, okay? Taking yourself out of it, out of, out of body experience and think like me, right? Think like the consumer, right? Don't assume that consumer, that customer knows anything, right? Just design it that way. Um, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I, you know, I think one of the best points you made, I, 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 I saw it on, I think it was episode 18. And part of this is about education and it's about the consumer and it's about walking through that process uh, as the consumer, not as one of our spouses or somebody who's familiar with the industry or somebody who works in our funeral home. It's about somebody who's coming into one of those four categories and, and educating them, providing some sort of differentiation and a resource to people for that time of need. Because, I, you know, one of the things, and, and this is Welton's uh, strike zone here, but I, I read, I saw a study from the University of Missouri that a consumer in the first 2.6 minutes or 2.6 seconds immediately focuses on what, what, what catches their attention and that's where they're going to go. And if right. you don't catch their attention, you don't give, you don't have that opportunity. You don't get a second chance. They're gone. And, and providing that resource to the consumer provides that level of differentiation so that it avoids that level of friction that may otherwise be created. You know, I think of it like fishing. My son and I love to fish, okay? And certain types of fish, you can sink that hook like a bass and you can reel them in pretty easy, right? Some other fish, you know, you're going you're gonna to lose a lot of them. Uh, and I kind of think about that consumer, and I don't mean this to be flippant at all, but you think about a consumer, right? You've got a fish, right? Your job is to keep bringing that fish closer to that boat, okay? okay. And if you have any weak spots anywhere, that fish could drop, right? If, you, if there's a technique, like if you lower your rod tip, I mean, there's all kinds of reasons why that fish will jump off. You have to think about that uh, in that customer journey as you're bringing somebody through your website. And this is easy stuff. Welton and I always talk about the easy wins, right? This is easy stuff. Here's a, here's a, a classic example. Take pre-planning. Most websites, the pre-planning is a drop down. It's a picture and a paragraph. It says it's a smart thing and you should do it, right? Like that's, that's it. Just with language, you can talk to me 
right? Just with language, you could have pre-planning for a Medicaid spin down, right? Are you pre-planning for your parents? Are you, that could all go to the same daggone page, right? But again, you're talking to me. So it's just language. That's the easy wins uh, on that. Well, what I wanted to do was, you know, in my idea of a website being a guide mm-hmm. is understanding that consumer, why they're there, right? And I don't know specifically why, but I know, you know, one of X. And then I, my job is to guide that consumer to their desired outcome, okay? Right. Welton knows how to shortcut this, okay? And he can shortcut this and we can literally take that consumer from that search query to one ad to that desired outcome. And if you think about it from a, uh, uh, just holistically, you know, like what, is, what are the four desired outcomes from those categories, okay? And then what would somebody type in to get to, you know what I mean? So you need to kind of swim upstream a little bit and think about what their thought process is, think like that consumer, and then think about what they're looking for. And then Welton or somebody with Welton's expertise can shortcut that for you with landing pages and other stuff. So Welton, tell us how, how that works. Yeah. So typically if a family, they go on Google and what you want to do is make sure whatever they type into Google, your ad speaks to them. So for example, if they're looking for cremation, the ad itself shouldn't be a generic funeral home ad. It should be about your value proposition around cremation. That will catch your eyes. Once they click on the ad, the mistake is to send them to the homepage and now they get lost. <laughs> you should send them directly to a page within the website about cremation. So the key to this is from the keyword they type in to the app they see, to the page they land on, everything should be in sync. Then basically you're walking, you're guiding them through the journey. It's easy journey for them. And then once they land on that page, it has enough information on there to turn that into a call. And Google loves this. Google actually has something called quality score. The quality score is tied to user experience. How good is the quality of the ad? If the ad speaks to them, more people are clicking on the ad, means the ad is more relevant, Google rewards you. Same thing, the user experience, when somebody goes on your website or the landing page, if they don't hit just the back button right away, that creates a bounce rate. If they stay on that page for a long time, then Google rewards you as well. So there's nothing new, Ellery, right? Google actually start rewarding those who got this funnel, this message is down already, and they're rewarding those who right, are guiding them through the journey already. They're rewarding them. Yeah, excellent illustration, Welton. Um, in, in, you know, going back to my fishing thing, you know, this shortcut here we're talking about is just like catching the fish closer to shore, right? You don't have to bring them in as far, less chance to lose them. Um, and I think that I, I will, I will, I will pitch Welton obviously because he's my friend and I think that they do an amazing job. But there's lots of people that can do what Welton oh, yeah. does. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah. The, the reason, <laughs> what I, what I mean by that is not just like who does it, but they can help you get better results, right? Shortcut that consumer to that landing page to that desired outcome for less money. Like for example, the last thing you want to do is bid on the word cremation. Oh. That's the dumbest thing ever. Right, because some high schooler who's typing in a report about cremation for some yeah. biology class, you're now going to pay for her to click on. Yeah. Right, yeah. good job. You know, you don't want to do that. So, again, I think that this would be a great exercise for the funeral home staff to get together. Okay, and talk about these four quadrants. The quadrant. Talk about the personas, and then say, okay, think like me. I'm the consumer. Right. What would I type in? Mm-hmm. Okay, what would I type in, you know, and then narrow it down, narrow it down, narrow it down, right. And come up with maybe five or six phrases, right. right. That they might type in. Um, and then you then work with Welton on something like that, right. To get that done. Uh, again, that's the first thing you got to win that ad, right. Mm-hmm. Then you got to take them to the landing page. You got to win that landing page. And then you keep kind of going on and on and on. I mean, you're understanding the theme, obviously. Um, Chris on, you know, when, we're talking about that guide on that website, right? One of the things obviously that's huge is going to be the value proposition, right? They're not going to call you for nothing. They're calling you because you presented something to them that is interesting to them that, you know, they resonate with to some degree, at least to a degree enough that they're going to take that next step. Talk about the importance of, of 
articulating that value proposition and maybe some, even some of the data that you shared with me earlier. Sure. I, I, I think when, you know, the key is it, it, it's about a value proposition. How are you different from the next guy? You know, you've got them on, you've got this opportunity. You finally got them onto your site. Welton's done his job. He's, he's made it onto the right landing page. How do you capture this person? How do you keep control of them? I mean, we, you know, when it comes to convenience, I think about, you know, Ellery, as you say, uh, friction. It all kind of comes down to convenience. Today's consumer wants convenience. You know, one of the statistics that I found that was remarkable from this study that we just did was that almost 46%, almost half of the consumers now, they want to make their arrangements almost virtual. They, 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 they had they're, nothing to do with COVID, right? It had nothing to do with COVID now. Wow. They want to make their arrangements uh, virtual. They're looking for convenience. Now, you think about it right now, that, that they're, they're in 50% of the people making their arrangements virtually right now. But this is what the consumer's telling us. All they're looking for, one of the key things is not that they're looking to spend less money. It's not that they're looking to change their preferences. They just want convenience. Hmm. And you have to provide that value proposition. They're going to look online. You've now captured them. You've got them in this spot here. You've got one opportunity. I think it's about seven seconds. You'd know this better than me, Welton. You got seven seconds to capture their attention of why you're different than the next person. You got to take it. You got to seize it right there and then. Okay. And it, again, I agree, uh, Ellery. It's not about this big fancy website, but it's about simply making it clean, making it easy, and just simply giving the consumer what they're looking for. Yeah, great point. You know, it's uh, for a lot of, you know, people that have been in the funeral business a long time, you know, if you go back, it wasn't that long ago that that phone call to the funeral home was the start of that buying journey, right? That was the inquiry, you know, entry point. Now it's way upstream. And, and like you said, you know, you've got to hit them at each, each point, each touch point and bring them to that next one. Um, that's a good point. And then the last thing that you need to do, um, we think, is that you need to have clear calls to action uh, on that website. Um, so, you know, you, you, you've got the person on the ad, you brought them to the website, you showed them a value proposition, you now have to ask them to call you, right? You have to get them to take that next step. My thought is, is that if I'm the consumer, give me every option so that there's one that I want. Mm -hmm. Because I think, it's, I think it's a little bit dangerous to assume that everyone wants to call you, mm -hmm. and feels comfortable calling you. I also think it's dangerous to assume that when they get to that point that you've got a lock already, right? That you've got that person because I don't think you do. And we're going to talk about in a very, an episode coming up very soon about, you know, how to convert that phone customer, right? When they actually get them on the phone, what you need to do, you know, again, uh, another step in that. Um, but if a consumer gets to that point and it's up or out, so they either leave or they have to keep going. And what if that keep going isn't yet ready to make a phone call? Because I can tell you my children, they'll never call you. They'll only call you if they have to call you. That's it, right? I mean, they'll probably text 911 if something happens. You know, I mean, that's, just, that's just the truth. These kids are like that. Um, and they're going to be your consumers, in, you know, in a few years. Um, so I think that what you need to do is you need to give the cons consumer another option, right? If they, if, you know, you could have over here again, you're guiding them, right? Do you have any further questions? Text us, right? You fill this form out, have this email. Don't make the phone number be the only option. Right. Because you could, you're, well, not, you're not, I could, I can promise you, you're going to lose some customers at that point. Okay. Um, maybe they don't want to call you. Maybe they're in a hospice bedside right now. They can't call you. You know what I mean? So there's all these different scenarios. You have to be able to give them a way to do that. Chris, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, you got to make it easy. You got to make it easy for the consumer, whether it be a live chat, whether it be texting, whether it be fill out a form, whether it be call. Mm -hmm. um, or set up a time to call me back. It's everything about this needs to be making it easy, easier for the consumer and, and, and to listen to what the consumer wants. It's not what we want them to do. It's what they want. And we have to be prepared to meet those needs. Um, you know, and, and I love the topic. You and I have talked about this before, Ellery, about, you know, about that first call. You know, each one of these things you have, when you've got them on the phone, you have an opportunity. Every single step in this process is an opportunity and you need to give them every opportunity to select you as opposed to you effectively telling them how you're going to select them. Yeah, great point. Well, uh, you obviously work with a lot of funeral homes, right? And you see their websites. Clearly you work with them every day. What are you seeing as the common calls to action that are on there now? There's no call to action. Oh, there's not. Yeah. There's not. The phone number. 
You're, even you cannot find the phone number. Elder, that's a frustration. Is sometimes at best the phone number will be on the top right hand corner. Very often they're obscured inside the contact us, and the contact us is inside the about us page. Hmm. That that's the frustration. <laughs> I do agree. You got to make sure, right? Ideally, the phone number should be easy to be found. It's locked, so it's floating. No matter where you go, the phone number is always there. Amongst other call to actions, could be and clickable. Yeah, right. So, gotta make sure the phone number is easy, tappable. Uh, they just tap it, and that turns into a call. Yeah. Amongst other um, avenues for them to reach out to you. Do you see Welton um, like a like a multiple uh, ways to contact the funeral home? Do you yeah. mainly just phone numbers? Obviously, phone numbers is the, is the you know. Phone number is the primary one. Right. Also, the phone number will be the primary one, mm -hmm. but you also want to make sure other avenues, texting, filling out the form, live chat, those are all available to them. Yeah. You know, I think about this test we're talking about, right? Um, this to me is analogous to somebody coming into my office, giving me a sales presentation mm -hmm. and then never asking me for the order, right? Or never asking me to take that next step. You know, yeah. thanks right. for your time. You know, yeah. hope that information was helpful. Um, I, I don't think, you know, you don't want to do that. Um, so um, the last thing I will say, and this is just kind of something to think about. Um, if you think right now that you're winning online, okay, and if you think that your online presence, the experience and everything is, is good, right, or good enough, uh, I, want to, I want to put a new test for you. I want you to think about this. What if your website was the only way you could win a call? What if they couldn't call you? What if they couldn't walk in your door? I mean, this is obviously dystopian, but what if there was no way to sell anything you offer unless it was that website? Mm -hmm. Would you do anything differently? I would. <laughs> sure. Everything layman terms, like consumer languages. So that way they don't need to talk to me. It's all in very, very plain English. Like instead of putting direct cremation, as I would put, I just want cremation. Right. So I, I will phrase it in consumer language terms. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. I think that's a great point. Uh, well, you know, it's about the customer language. It's not about our language. Mm -hmm. It's about their language, and right. it's about the, cons the more that we make it about the customer and what the customer, how we make it simpler for the customer. Um, everybody will win. <clears throat> Um, Chris, while, while we got you here, we're wrapping up here, but do you have any other interesting data points from that study you want to throw out there? Um, you know, I think the interesting, you know, some of the most interesting things about the study were so much about this is it's about, it's about, uh, technology, it's about transparency, and it's about the physical presence of the funeral. So many of these things, it's not about an, a, an, a cataclysmic shift in the, in the industry but it's an accelerant. It's bringing our industry much more in line with the times. These aren't technologies that don't exist. Um, people just want to be educated. They want it to be simple. And it's really just about um, listening more to the consumer. And we've been forced to do it over these last six to seven months now with COVID. And we're all socially distancing and doing things differently. All we're doing is utilizing technology and utilizing the tools that are at our fingertips. So, um, you know, it's an exciting time for a lot of us in this industry. Uh, it's a challenging time for a lot, but um, there's going to be a lot of winners that come out of this and for people that embrace what the consumer is telling us. My final thought is that if there's any part of your buying journey that you don't know what that customer expects, you need to spend some time on that touch point. So think about every touch point that consumer has with you, identify what that expectation is, right? Talk, think about it. Think like the consumer, identify that expectation and then audit what you're doing to see, am I, am I uh, meeting or exceeding that expectation? So, well, any final thoughts? Yeah, just, I think a good way to think about this is you want to do the homework for the consumer. What that means is when they come to your site, they're trying to figure out, hey, most likely they might hop out onto somebody else's website. But the reason they do that is they're writing it down, hey, is this firm better than the other firm? 
So you want to do the homework for them. On your website, you want to put down how are you different. Most likely on their sites, they don't talk about how they're different. Right? You also want to showcase your credibility, say no to reviews. So you want to track them on your site. You're doing all the homework for them. Even if they go to your competitor's site, like, wow, your site is much better because you already tell them how you're different, why you're much better. <laughs> when most other websites, they don't even do that. Yeah. Great point. Uh, great point. I love that because that's exactly what they're doing. They're doing homework, right? right. That's it. So great point. Uh, well, everybody, we're going to wrap this one up. Thank you so much for listening. We do appreciate it. Um, as always, uh, Welton and I are available. If you have any topics you want us to talk about, or if we can help you with anything, and I'm sure Chris as well, please reach out to any of us. Uh, and if you have a chance and you could leave us a review on in the iTunes store or anywhere else, we'd certainly appreciate that. And we do thank you guys for listening. So we'll talk to you next week. Bye everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank you.